So good morning, everyone, and welcome to a new FinFellas uh, event, uh, which we are kicking off with the first panel today. Our topic will be real estate in P2P lending, and I'm happy uh, to be here with the speakers and participants of this channel. Uh, so we already had uh, the topic of uh, real estate last year, and uh, uh, you, you can you can watch it on the YouTube channel of FinFellas. So uh, this year we um, modelized a little bit on the on the topics uh, we are talking about. Um, so I'm happy we're here. Um, the event of Finfellas uh, just started at uh, 9 a.m. Um, so you can you can go to the booth and uh, have a little chat uh, with the P2P platforms there and also make some appointments um, and chat uh, privately. So um, let's take all the chances you got to connect with the P2P platforms and uh, let's kick off uh, the topic of today. So um, we are here in this uh, wonderful panel with uh, Igor Puntus from uh, Barker State. Good morning, Igor. Yeah, good morning. Morning. Good morning. We are here with uh, Martinas Kimbalas from Let's Invest. Good morning, Martinas. Uh, hi, Tobias. Hi, everyone. We are here with uh, Gustas from Inrento. Sorry, I cannot pronounce your last name. <laughs> <laughs> morning, everyone. Good morning. And we're here with Artos Abos. Good morning. Morning, everyone. Hope you're doing good. I will, uh, I'm in a happy position to be the moderator of this uh, panel uh, from uh, today for the first one. Uh, we will talk about the uh, Ukraine conflict uh, uh, or what it means, the Ukraine conflict uh, for real estate, for the real estate industry. Um, but first of all, I would like to give uh, all the participants or the participants a short uh, notice for the introduction uh, to introduce themselves and their uh, platform they're working with. So Igor, uh, maybe you can have a start, introduce yourself and have some words about your uh, employer. Yeah, hi guys, once again, uh, I mean, I think you are familiar with us. We are the Balkan State real estate uh, crowdfunding platform. We are in operation for more than five years, uh, operating mostly in Riga, uh, in Latvia and Finland. Uh, we have a portfolio of around 25 uh, million euros. I would say we are quite small platform and uh, I think we are, we are planning to still stay the same. We are not planning to scale up. Maybe we will add some, some additional countries to our portfolio, but mainly uh, those will be Baltics, uh, Finland. Um, yes. Uh, we also introduced a few years ago this group buying model, uh, which was successfully uh, with this help sold uh, flats for around... Uh, I think right now it's seven, eight million euros, uh, which is working fine here is Riga. I think it's it's five projects that been that been uh, sold uh, this way. So yeah, we, we're continuing working. We have some some uh, some struggles with the delayed projects. I, I would say there are there are quite a few right now, but we're working on uh, so lower that amount. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, Igor. Um, Artos, uh, maybe you can have uh, the second uh, place to, to introduce yourself and give us a little bit about your background. Yeah, hello, uh, my name is Artur. I'm from company Land Secure. We focus on uh, B2B lending to the agricultural sector. Uh, so mainly our focus are farmers. Uh, at the moment, we are working in the Latvian market, uh, but we are looking to expand uh, all across the Europe in the near future. Uh, we've been operating for two years now. Uh, our portfolio is a bit smaller than Bulk State, but uh, we are working to increase it. Uh, lately, as the season is starting, uh, we are receiving more applications for agricultural loans as we ever have and uh, looking forward uh, conquering the European market. Okay, thank you very much Artus. Gustas, uh, maybe you can uh, take us uh, on a short journey uh, about you and your uh, company. Yes, uh, so Inrento is Europe's first licensed and largest 
by to let crowdfunding platform. So we enable people to invest in rental properties in Lithuania and Spain, just from 500 euros. And just like they would with actual rental properties, they owe, they get income from rental uh, income and also they earn income from capital gains. So we are here, you know, to beat the inflation. And uh, when we speak and when we will speak about conflict, I believe we need to separate uh, real estate with development and the rental market because the trends are completely opposite. So looking forward for our discussion. Thank you very much. So, Martinos, uh, maybe uh, you can have a short introduction about yourself and your company. Um, yes, obviously. So, uh, I'm Martinas Simbolos. Uh, I'm project manager at uh, Let's Invest uh, platform. Uh, we are an investment uh, boutique for medium and large scale investors. Uh, our strategy is uh, to select uh, more conservative projects and uh, larger projects. So they would be attractive not only to the medium investors, but also for the larger investors and the institutional capital. And uh, therefore, we are, we are thinking that uh, if uh, big players uh, who are experienced in real estate and uh, have uh, all the analytics team uh, behind them and uh, the trust uh, the valuation of our projects, we will also have uh, everyone who are interested from investing uh, from 100 euros to join the platform. And uh, our goal is to connect experienced uh, and ambitious real estate uh, developers uh, with uh, investors who are keen investing in uh, real estate and all the investments in our platform are secured uh, by pledged real estate assets. So giving this in hand, uh, we are currently operating in Lithuania only, but uh, this year we are also planning to expand in the other markets, so the platform would be even more attractive for international investors as well. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, first of all, I would like to invite the audience, but also you guys, uh, to ask questions. Uh, whether there are any questions uh, to any speaker, just uh, just unmute yourself and uh, give us a short in uh, give us a short notice on, on what you are asking uh, each other. But also for the audience, um, there is on the right side you have a little um, chat. You can insert your question, and uh, we will take care of that question uh, probably at the end of the uh, panel and uh, ask um, all the participants uh, to to answer the question. Um, so let's get into the topic. I mean, uh, yeah, the the Ukrainian. Uh, uh, yeah, conflict or war, however you call it, uh, is something which is very present uh, since uh, more than a month now. Uh, we would like to um, talk about the influences of this war to the real estate industry. Um, first question, uh, how is the uh, Ukrainian uh, conflict related to P2P lending? Uh, Gustav, you mentioned uh, at first uh, you're into the topic and uh, um, uh, happy to, to talk about it, so maybe you can uh, start uh, with your idea about uh, the question. I, you know, first I would like to start that, you know, uh, a lot of times from bloggers or even right now I'm hearing uh, P2P and crowdfunding. How will it be impacted? Uh, when we speak about what we are doing, we should not separate it as crowdfunding or P2P, which should consider real estate or real estate lending as a general market of all financial system. Bearing this in mind, uh, you know, everyone got affected, but I believe, in my personal opinion, that the real estate development is going to be impacted the, the heaviest. Uh, if we look at general real estate landscape and what you can do there, especially those where you build, you know, from scratch, uh, mainly for the reason is because the commodities uh, uh, prices are growing. If you, if we consider, for example, wood, EU imports 80% of wood from Russia and Ukraine. So consider now that we have a shortage of supply. There is a good thing that during the COVID pandemic, uh, Europe started importing wood from Canada. So the, the process has started and I believe now they are, you know, loading, loading the ships and there will be some delay, but this is the same with glass. This is the same with metals. And uh, obviously the prices of construction are going to skyrocket and shorter. Later, they will stabilize, stabilize because you know, no more trade roads will be established with Asia, Turkey, Africa. But uh, 
you know, every crisis brings an opportunity. And I think where the opportunity lays is the rental market, because when you consider the development market and that a lot of projects will be delayed, I believe, and the prices will skyrocket. Uh, with rent, we are seeing something different. Last few years, you know, rental yields have dropped significantly because of the uh, increased prices during the pandemic. But what we're seeing right now and already in Vilnius is that, you know, Ukrainians are become, uh, beginning to create the tendencies for the, for the rental markets. So there are some cities in Lithuania where there is no supply left of the apartments for rent. And this is becoming even more evident in uh, the larger cities like Kolnas and Vilnius. And the uh, same is happening in Poland. If we think about EU, EU had uh, an, uh, an average immigration of EU during one year is 1.5 million people net. So this is how much new the population grows of EU. Last uh, month, EU population grew by 4.5 million uh, people. So consider this, we grew our population three times. So no matter which market you are in Europe, all these people that are fleeing the, uh, the, the, the war, they will need a place to sleep. They will need a place to live. And this is where the rental market is going to go, uh, is going to experience higher demand. And because the demand will not be satisfied by new developments, we will see, you know, uh, good, you know, better times than they were with COVID in the rental market. Okay, thank you very much. Martinez, uh, what is what is your idea on the question? Uh, do you think uh, the same way as Gustas? Yeah, so Gustas uh, gave a uh, very um, interesting and uh, supporting arguments of uh, the topic. So I wouldn't differentiate that much uh, the development perspective from the rental market, since uh, we are speaking of immigrants uh, coming to the European Union. So it's not only people who are running away from the war, uh, so they are war immigrants, but uh, there are also people from uh, Belarus, from uh, Russia, from uh, uh, Sakartvelo, from uh, Moldova, those countries who are close to the war conflict. And they are, they are migrating because they might be next or they don't want to live uh, under the conditions they are living now. And uh, people who are immigrating from this perspective, they have uh, higher uh, purchasing power and uh, they can uh, increase the demand in the uh, long term. So uh, we, we also experience this uh, supply chain issues and uh, we, we see the higher prices of metals, energy, bricks, other commodities. But uh, these are the short term uh, issues. And uh, in the long term, uh, we believe that uh, logistics uh, will solve their issues. And uh, we have this uh, two years back uh, with the pandemic and the global situation. And now the developers are a bit more agile, a bit more flexible than they were five, seven years ago. And uh, this uh, change in, uh, in the overall consumer confidence, which is happening right now because everybody is in shock of what is happening. Uh, it should be, you know, some, somehow stabilized uh, in the short term and in the long term, we will see this uh, growth of demand uh, on not only for the rental properties, but also for the apartments, uh, for the houses and uh, for the commercial uh, real estate as well. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, the the idea behind uh, both of you talking about is very interesting uh, for the for the part of Lithuania. So, uh, Igos, maybe you can give us a short insight what you and your company thinks about the uh, situation in in Latvia, where you are mainly operating. You see, I'm, I'm I'm not really so so optimistic. I would say we are not in a rental market in any way because the Baltic states' money is too expensive. I would say to 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 give the money for, for some developer to rent it out then. But uh, what we can see right now, as, as the colleagues mentioned before, really the commodity prices are just skyrocketed. Uh, for example, uh, I mean, when the last year because of the COVID in April, I think just the wood prices got up for 20% uh, just in a few weeks. And we thought that that's just very bad and that will skyrocket the selling price. Uh, because of the war, we saw that the metal prices and the cement prices 
uh, went up 40 percent. So what we see right now is that, uh, I mean, obviously the development projects that are already uh, been in the process and are and, and, and the, at the finishing uh, speed, and obviously they will continue. But for example, with the projects uh, that only been started and where this only foundation uh, been built, obviously all those projects, at least in Riga, will be uh, will be how to say it, uh, conserved right now. So obviously nothing will happen as we see right now as well that the banks, uh, the Latvian banks already said that they're not planning to finance from the scratch the development. Obviously they're planning to finance only the development projects where the renovation is involved. So for example, that, that, that's good for us because the Balkan state is mainly a financing renovation project. We're not financing uh, building from the scratch. So. What will happen, of course, in the future, as the colleagues said, uh, there will be large demand, but the proposition will be very small. And of course, the prices, I think, in a, in a half year time, will go up for the for the renovated flats and for uh, for for the development. But uh, because of all that, obviously, we'll see that uh, there are lots of delays right now in the projects. And uh, the problem with us is that uh, if we are speaking about the projects, which is a uh, I would say the cheap flats, the flats that you can sell under uh, one and fifteen hundred uh, euros, for example. Then the flats from from the more expensive segment. Obviously, there is there is a delay because uh, in Riga, uh, the large amount of the buyers were non-residents. Obviously, they were uh, they were Russians, they were Kazakhstan, they were Ukrainians, and right now, obviously. All this segment, I, I would say, being postponed. Everyone is cautious. No one is buying, and uh, and I think there will be some some uh, some uncertainty in the market for for several months at least. So we're seeing that, for example, we have we have uh, several projects uh, where there were large funds were coming in, and they just said that they want just to 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 postpone they're not they're not refusing to buy but they want to see how it goes uh, in, in the next few months for example so that's the caution on the market uh, so yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes we'll see when it moves okay thank you very much um Artus, uh you're uh, with with the land secured you're uh, more in agricultural loans um how do you see th uh, see this um uh, situation moving at the moment. Yeah, uh, first of all, I hope my sound is better now. Someone in the comments mentioned uh, that my sound is no good. Um, as for agricultural market, uh, we're not seeing any impact uh, in our platform. Actually, quite the opposite. We're having a record month for loans for uh, new user registrations. Uh, the agri agricultural land prices has been growing steadily for the past 20 years uh, and they are still growing of course there's inflation uh, for commodities at the moment uh, but uh, the smarter farmers are experiencing that uh, <clears throat> sorry uh, this year's harvest will be good for them because uh, all the seeds that were so last year uh, are a lot of uh, I'm sorry <laughs> uh, a lot cheaper uh, than they are now so there will be increase in the in the wheat price at the moment uh, because of the conflict because Ukraine and Russia are the Two most uh, two powerhouses of the wheat market. Um, so, what we hear from farmers is that uh, they they see an option opportunity to increase and grow their businesses, and that will help them acquire new lands. Uh, the land there is as much land as there is. Uh, agricultural land has always been in demand, and it will be. And in this situation, when there is uh, some extra money flowing in, uh, the demand for the land will be just 
10 times bigger and the opportunity for the farmers will be there. Uh, as for uh, loans, uh, farmers are actually looking looking for places to get the money to buy the land because uh, not, banks are not always uh, open to their projects because there are sometimes uh, very small patches of land that are near to them but they are uh, the banks are not interested in financing those so that's where we come in and uh, at the moment <clears throat> we are receiving in March we have received 10 times more uh, loan applications than we have any other month just for the reason that uh, people are looking to buy more land um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the situation that we are experiencing right now. Okay, thank you very much. I like the way you guys are talking about the conflict uh, with uh, several opportunities, um, uh, whether it's in the in the lending market or the agriculture market. Um, but I also uh, understand in a, in a very good way, uh, like like Igor said, that there is quite a big skeptic in the market. <clears throat> so um, I think. Uh, a lot of you um, also also experienced uh, the the pandemic, the COVID crisis uh, two years ago. Um, Igor, maybe you can give us a rough idea about uh, your experiences at Bark Estate in comparison from uh, the COVID crisis versus uh, this uh, conflict crisis now. Um, where's the difference uh, for you? You mentioned in your uh, in your introduction that uh, Bark Estate is dealing with uh, some uh, late. Uh, some late payments or some uh, late repayments, and now uh, some some projects are postponed. Um, is there any difference? Is it, is it a, a crisis just two years uh, the next time, or how do you see it? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, uh, with the COVID, uh, we saw at that time when it started two years ago. Uh, I mean, obviously, all the investments stopped as well. I mean, it was it was completely. I mean, it's, it's it was on a stall. No one was investing, and the problem was uh, that obviously no one is also no one was buying the flats. But then, uh, as we saw that, I mean, people were still cautious investing. But uh, before speaking about the real estate market, everyone was. I mean. It was selling quite quite easy, quite fast, because I think people people understood that it will finish someday. I mean, obviously, it wasn't going to. I mean, it started it started uh, on December, and then and then already in March, uh, this this all the restrictions were lifted up, and uh, everyone understood that those waves that sometimes it will end. Obviously, never no one could could tell when it will end, but but everyone understood. So. The selling of the of the flats continued. The problem, of course, uh, was uh, was in Riga and in Latvia that uh, because of the COVID, because of those restrictions, I think uh, almost all the government uh, and and city council agencies stopped. I mean, it was it was completely unrealistically to to get uh, to get the project. It was unrealistically to to sign the paperwork. It, it was just very hard. For example, as I mentioned before, to our investors. Uh, even with our largest uh, development projects, uh, the, the developer received several fines because he was he was forbidden to I mean to even to move closely to his project and he was he was forced to I mean just just to freeze the project for for several months I think it was for at least for a half half a year, so so that was that was the, the problem but everyone. But everyone, I would say, was was anyway optimistic. Everyone see saw that there will be a light at the end of the tunnel and that we can continue. I mean, we have to. This, the only problem was the restrictions. Right now, as we're seeing it, I think no one can understand uh, where it will end. Uh, obviously, no one understand. I mean, uh, about the prices, the commodity prices. How long will it go up? I mean, what will happen? I mean, we see that, as I said, the commodities, the some metal is plus 40 percent. Will it stop there, or will it go up anyway? For example, if I, as a developer, can I, uh, can I, for example, uh, continue with my project? Can I put this 40 plus percent to my construction costs, and that will be it, or maybe there will be plus 40 percent once again in a one month's time? 
So that's uh, that's that's the main difference. And of course, I mean, the selling, uh, I would say, stopped. For example, if we saw that, uh, as I said, in 2020, uh, in in March, everything stopped, and but then then during the summer, everything continued, and everyone uh, everyone uh, was ready to buy again. I mean, right now it's again it stopped, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, maybe maybe. I mean, people, people will, uh, as with the COVID, in the month's time, they will understand that uh, it, it's not, it's not. It, there will be an ending to that, and they will start buying once again. But the problem is, of course, I mean, with the non-residents, I think uh, this won't go, won't go anywhere. I mean, uh, the Russians are forbidden to buy something right now. At least they're forbidden to transfer the money from Russia. So Europe, and that's of course and is an issue for the real estate market uh, here in Riga because, as I said, there's a large portion of, of uh, non-residents who are the buyer from uh, from uh, for this for this uh, real estate, which is above average. So, yeah. Uh, if I can, I want to add to what what the Igor told told us. So the COVID uh, brought us uncertainty at first. But uh, later, it was a huge boost in the market, not only from the demand side, but also how it shaped the market. Uh, because people uh, uh, were keen of buying larger apartments. They were going somewhere outside the city center. They were investing in houses in uh, larger square meters uh, of their places. Just, you know, the, the whole pandemic, it shaped uh, the market how, how it was. And for example, what we faced in Lithuania is the second apartment by the seaside. It was, you know, massive uh, demand for it and the, the price uh, skyrocketed uh, there. And um, right now, it's very hard to predict what uh, war effect will, uh, will be. And uh, I think it's uh, too, easy, uh, too early to evaluate uh, how, how it can shape the market. But one thing that uh, we can uh, really speak about is that both in uh, both during the pandemic and now we will face a high inflation. And uh, what uh, in the COVID pandemic time it was the inflation caused by the central banks who uh, had uh, this monetary policy of uh, printing money and uh, saving businesses that uh, could not uh, be running as usual. Uh, but at the same time, uh, people uh, had uh, record uh, savings, so which means that uh, the overall situation in the economy was not that bad, and uh, the the high inflation uh, resulted in the high prices in the real estate market, uh, low demand, uh, high demand, low supply, and uh, we had uh, this very much uh, this balance. And uh, here, we with the war, uh, we will have inflation, but not because. Uh, of the monetary policy of the central bank, but because of the real actions that uh, causes uh, a low supply of metals, a uh, low supply of crops, low supply of commodities. And uh, we need to somehow uh, react on this and uh, think uh, of the ways how to save the capital earned right now and uh, see this uh, real estate as a way in uh, one of the most uh, secure methods of uh, firefighting inflation. I just uh, also want to add here that uh, what we have here right now is not inflation, it's more mm -hmm. stagflation, meaning that you know the economy is not growing or it's shrinking and we're experiencing high levels of inflation. I think uh, what is very important to understand that, uh, you know, we had double digit inflation last year. Uh, I believe this year projected inflation is around 13%. If we continue three years with 13% inflation, compounded inflation means that 1,000 euro today will be equal to 2,000 uh, euros in three years. So what can people do? People can invest. Uh, three best asset classes who perform through stagflation in particular periods are uh, obviously gold, uh, commodities, and real estate. But when we speak about real estate, and I think what is very important to understand is that you cannot invest in fixed income. Uh, 
uh, investments, meaning that, uh, for example, bonds don't perform during stagflation because or loans are more or less the same as bonds. Uh, we just say it's a mor mortgage secured uh, bond. Uh, you just cannot trade it on the market. But uh, here's very simple math. If you invest 10% uh, uh, interest loan, and inflation is 13%, you lost 3%. Well, well done, you know, you didn't lose 13%, but what else better can you do? Uh, the other thing, what you can do, you can invest with variable income assets. So this is what we work on and this is what we do. Uh, in, in rental, you know, you can, you are not only from rental income, as I told, but capital gains. So basically when property appreciates, you get partial income from that uh, capital appreciation. So uh, last month we had an exit, uh, we made 20, over 20% 20 return to the investor, 6% from rent, 14% from capital growth. So you may think, oh, like 14% uh, capital growth in a one year, oh, it's, it's very high. But reality is that inflation was 11%. So the, the premium that we did was is 3%. And if we look at the 100-year history, uh, on average, real estate beats inflation by 1%. So the actual profit is 2%. We just preserved the capital of the investors. So moving forward into the future, this is, again, why that's why I'm saying I am not optimistic, I'm not pessimistic, but I think that, as I told previously, every crisis brings an opportunity, and I think that for a very long time I've been repeating myself that development is higher risk, and if you invest in real estate development, you should invest with higher return where, you know, the risk, uh, you get uh, uh, risk premium. But... The reality is that, you know, when uh, during these periods, uh, real estate development markets are being tested and they will be tested now. And uh, I think that, you know, investments which are based on cash flow, for example, rental uh, properties investment uh, is going to continue. Well, obviously, some projects are going to experience some delays, uh, but in general, with high population growth and uh, supply not being grown as well, we get a positive environment for high returns from rental real estate. Okay, thank you very much. So when I when I uh, try to wrap this up, it's like uh, real estate might be a, a factor against inflation, um, no matter from from where inflation comes from. Um, just like uh, Igor's pointed out, uh, the the shortage of of commodities uh, for for building material. Is a big problem um, in, in, in in real estate, and which is which is the kind of in, inflation real estate platforms have to face now. Um, so um, maybe it's a good idea to uh, to talk about it. Like, uh, so not investing is the worst idea at all. Um, so Artos, you, you told uh, your inquiries uh, at 10x. I think it was the right number uh, this this year. Um, so do you see the same um, a trend uh, with your platform like uh, like the other guys just uh, talked about uh, about real estate? We are looking at things optimistic um, because uh, grains, crops, vegetables, potatoes, food in general, first necessity for people. As the population keeps growing, the migration to Europe at this point also keeps growing. It's a bigger demand for food. So, and where do we get food? We get food from agricultural land. So, our overall view on this is that the, the market for agricultural land will increase in Baltic states a lot because there will be more opportunities for farmers uh, to replace those suppliers who came from Russia, Ukraine, etc. Uh, and like we meant, uh, like we had this little segment before about COVID, people find ways to adapt. It's the same here. Uh, this is a new thing. No one knows how it will end, but uh, people will always find to adapt. So. In short, yes, we, we we see potential for larger growth at this point than we might have seen before. Okay, so um, 
you just mentioned you, we, we we all don't know how long the war would, uh, will take and with which uh, situation we will be confronted uh, then uh, depending on how long it will take um so uh, I don't know maybe maybe you can have a short idea um on the on the influencing factors we we as investors you as as platforms which are the the factors or indicators you're you're checking weekly or whatever um how how this situation um will develop over over the years is it inflation rate is this uh, the the number of uh, europeans um, refugees is is there anything um you um you check egos maybe you can start as you mentioned uh, there are some pro uh, some some projects uh, postponed uh, with the commentary like uh, we will see how the uh, um the situation will develop uh, during the next month so i mean you mean uh, how for example those projects that are postponed uh, for example and the construction is freezed and uh, how it will develop in the future for those yeah i mean uh, i mean the, the projects as i said where there's a renovation for example we have one large project in riga uh, which which were pushing pushing anyway because as i said that's the renovation and uh, the prices uh, for the for the renovation also got up as well but we see that for example the selling prices are also got up and uh, and uh, I mean, how we how we understand that, for example, is it is it uh, I mean the way to go? I mean, is it is it uh, do we have to continue with the project or do we have to freeze it? We we see it from the large uh, real estate brokers. For example, we have we signed uh, an agreement, the uh, exclusive agreement for this exact property, one one of the largest uh, real estate brokers here in Riga, which is Lazio, and they're saying that for this uh, exact property, the the um, the demand is very high. So obviously with that project, we understand that anyway, we will sell it uh, quite easily and quite fast. And the, and the, and the prices that, is, that also go up for the selling prices will, will uh, I mean, it, it will be enough to pay but for the construction prices, which also went up. But there are some some projects, as I said, uh, ways from we have to build it from the scratch when it just uh, there is only just a land plot, and obviously, but those projects, I think, they will be postponed at least for a year right now. So obviously, I mean, you, uh, I think the people will continue to develop them only on April, March next year. I think everyone will will wait right now for, for those for, for the new construction. But as I said, the, the renovation and the and then the projects that already been in construction, they they will continue even even though the prices are are up. So because I mean, it's very hard to freeze and to conserve the projects where they're all already uh, the walls has been built and then uh, I mean to, to just just to freeze it for a year. Those the, the the loans are already been taken from the banks or from from real estate crowdfunding platforms or from the funds. I mean, the people have to continue anyway because they will lose much more if they will stop those. So, but once again, yes, uh, we, we are looking on the market, we are looking on the prices, and uh, we had some several projects uh, that we are also are. I mean, we even uh, haven't took the money for them. I mean, we're just we're just uh, refusing to to enter. I mean, we're just saying that guys. I think uh, let's wait for the next year's March, obviously, or let's wait for at least the commodity prices to to go down. Because as I said, if you are building the, uh, if you are if you are constructing the house from the scratch, there is obviously the metal and the cement is involved. And obviously, if the forty percent prices are up for those uh, for those construction materials, obviously the the whole construction prices will be up for at least thirty percent. So. We're just we're we're waiting for those projects and we're not uh, answering them right now. Is there uh, just for my interest? Uh, is there a possibility uh, to um, to exit uh, this this kind of project? You just mentioned uh, they they postpone it uh, to another situation, uh, but the loans are already taken. Um, is is there a possibility those project? Um, like uh, like like a uh, roll backwards um, uh, in in case because uh, the economic uh, doesn't doesn't work uh, for for the projector in any way. 
I mean, it's usually it's, it's this way that uh, if if you are building and you a new project is it's, it's a new building. Obviously, when there is already walls been built, uh, m most of the time all the flats and all the all the units will be reserved. So obviously, I mean, there, there's no way for you to roll back. I mean, you, you are you are pushing forward and then you are continuing. But so obviously, for example, if we're speaking that you acquired the, the land plot, you got the project, and you already uh, I mean, and you are finishing only the foundation, then of course there is a possibility for you to just finish the foundation, can conserve the projects, and for example, for a year, which from the construction point of view, sometimes it's even better for the building in the future. I mean, if the, if the foundation will, will stay for a year and, and, and no one will be, will be building something on like that. So, I mean, it depends what stage you are on. Of course, if there is, if there is, uh, large loans and, and the flats are reserved and you already took the reservation money, then of course there's no way for you, you will continue. Uh, and then there is a risk notary for developer, of course there's agreements being signed between you and the construction company, so it's, it's the risk are just divided between you and the, and, and the developer. But, uh, but uh, as I said, if you only have a land plot or you have the foundation, there is always a possibility and opportunity to roll back and just, just to freeze it. So this, your mic is off. Sorry, thank you very much for the explanation. Um, Artus, um, maybe you can um, uh, talk about it now. Now the um, prices for uh, weed uh, you just uh, mentioned um, are very high and uh, the, the, the projects at, at LandSecure are very attractive uh, for investors. Do you have uh, similar indicators or uh, some, some kind of scenarios you're, you're looking at um, to... Um, to, to, to try to avoid um, loans who uh, um, yeah do some kind of of, of the back roll so um, not only they are economical uh, interesting um, but uh, the moment the wheat prices drop uh, for any reason the war ends or whatever um, is there any kind uh, any any kind of uh, risk um, uh, avoiding for, for you as a platform as and as well uh, for for your investors uh, concerning to the war? Uh, yes, uh, as a platform, we are asking our borrowers to make a three-way agreement with grain buyers. So that's uh, well, our way of making things uh, safe for us, for our investors, by uh, locking in the prices at the moment. For example, there's a balance between there was a moment last year when the fertilizer prices went up, uh, the grain prices stayed the same. So there's a disbalance at that point. <clears throat> but at the moment, uh, the fertilizer prices are still high. That's one of the most needed commodities for farmers. So that's an uh, interesting thing to look at. Uh, but at the moment, the grain prices has come back to the same level, so it makes a balance between those things uh, for profit margins for the farmers. Um, and with the three-way agreement, uh, they lock in these prices. So there isn't a way to lose money, at least for the farmer, uh, because, for example, he has paid more money for the fertilizer, but at the same time he has locked in the grain price. So there's still the same profit margin. Uh, this, is, this is how we back our projects to make sure that they are secure and uh, future proof. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Gustas, uh, how do you uh, rate the uh, situation? Um, are you working uh, with with the indicators uh, concerning the, the uh, whole economic uh, situation? Excuse me, can you please specify the, the question uh, more narrowly? I was, uh, so we are trying to, to find out, uh, are there any indicators for platforms um, like uh, like Egos and Atos already mentioned, it's the grain price, uh, the uh, commodity prices. Um, are you into? Um, are you looking at the inflation rate, um, depending on, on how uh, valuable your projects are, 
or is, is there any, any me, specific okay, indicator? So, indicator? so, you know, so this is what I'm saying, that we are different and we are different because uh, most of the properties are fully uh, developed. So basically, the investor, when he's investing, he already sees the rental yield and he he buys into that. So basically, it's very clear. Usually, there's no development. And uh, inflation, where it matters for us, so first is capital appreciation. So basically, the increase of value of uh, property value. But secondly, uh, this, is what, this is what I was talking about before about fixed income, is that even when you get income from rent on in rental, it's indexed to inflation. So let's say today, this year, you earn 7%. And this uh, next year, uh, it publishes that the inflation was 10%. So from next year's moving forward, you get 7.7% interest. So this is what I'm talking about, that you know, inflation should not diminish your investment return and it should not decrease you know, what you're earning. And people should be able you know, to have a better hedge against inflation than they have today. And this is, you know, this is what we work on. So looking from that perspective, we, we still haven't changed our process. We see that in general, we see that uh, not, mostly none of our deals will be affected at the short term because of any of these changes. Uh, in the long term, changes will be affected, uh, whether they will be negative or positive. Time will show, but I believe that if we look in the long term perspective, and I would also like to add that, you know, our projects is five, seven years, sometimes 10 years, uh, they, they will go through this uh, period. You know, this is the whole point of doing buy to let to reduce your risk, reduce your risk exposure, protect yourself from inflation and get predictable income. How, when you make an investment on rental, you make it not on visualization or on a process, a promise. You invest in actual assets that are developed, actual images, actual tenants, and actual return. Yeah, okay. But uh, I mean, uh, the, the guys who are renting out your uh, your apartments or your houses, um, they are also depending on, on their income, which is affected by inflation. This is why I just ask. Uh, so mainly it's, it's uh, your indicator, and when I get it right, is, is the inflation rate and the, the amount of money um, through through salaries for your um, customers at the end, right? I still don't understand your question then correctly, but uh, I will answer it how I understand it then. So the way okay. how I understand your question, am I not worried that people income will be reduced due to the inflation? So yeah. here I would say, yes, I have some concerns, but at the same time, we are experiencing unprecedented population growth. We don't have such supply. We don't have such supply of housing in Lithuania. If we look at Lithuania and we look at, uh, you know, this rental income that we are talking, all now properties that are listed, the rents are undervalued because the price of rent has have jumped in the last month. And if this trend is going to continue, it means that all of the investments that we have under they are valued at the very uh, right price. And uh, yet, obviously, what I'm saying is there will be some, some projects that will have some problems. But in general, I believe in the residential sector and most importantly, affordable housing. What we are offering, we are not offer. none of our properties are luxury or premium class. All is affordable cloud, uh, uh, housing. Most of it is the, the cheapest uh, it, they have the cheapest rental prices you can find in the city. So basically, with rent, you always have the, the, the floor, the bottom price. So no matter what kind of the apartment is, it cannot reach this price. So in Vilnius, it's 300 euros per month. You can get very bad apartment uh, somewhere closer to the center, or you can get a nice one a little bit outside the, you know, the city center. So all this we, we cover this segment. We look at affordable housing because housing as general in Europe will become a privilege only to the rich. And those who had assets, they're going to continue to have those. But those who did not have, and they would come in inflation in the period, people will not be able to afford house. So what people need is affordable housing, affordable rents, where they could rent, live, and uh, feel comfortable. Okay, thank you very much. Now I got you. Also, was my mistake. also uh, now, because you asked, I just want to... Uh, I just also want to add uh, 
uh, another aspect is that uh, in general, Vilnius rent market is undervalued. So when you think about Vilnius uh, rental real estate, uh, prices should be higher. The same was with real estate prices in general. Like they grew very high. Martinez can also uh, add and told that, you know, prices grew up, but people still afford them. So how does this happen? The reason for that, that before the price of real estate was too cheap. If uh, you were a secretary worker and your husband was, for example, a hairdresser, uh, you could both afford uh, an apartment in the city center. Question is the size, the shape, the condition, but you still could afford it. And this is nonsense because this is European capital and uh, people earn uh, salaries in euros. So uh, low income uh, workers should not be able to afford the real estate in central city. Same as for rents. So basically where we came through pandemic and where we're coming now, we are coming more to the more European approach to real estate pricing and the rental pricing. Okay, thank you very much. Martinez, maybe you can uh, add something on the situation in Lithuania? Yeah, so so first of all, uh, um, the main thing that uh, we watch out and what we evaluate at first at uh, Let's Invest, it's uh, the business plan of the project. So prior to taking and uh, publishing the project on the platform, we ran several stress, uh, stress tests to see whether you know it's, it can be affected by the rise of costs. Uh, how can it be, uh, be affected? How can it be affected? What if uh, uh, the project will not sell that well? Uh, what if uh, the price will not uh, increase throughout the year? What if it will decrease 5 10%? and uh, they will need to offer a discount. So this uh, solid and uh, sound business plan is uh, at the crucial part uh, when thinking about uh, what uh, investment opportunities you as an investor should choose. And uh, this uh, stands out uh, how the development of the projects and if the business plan of the development is uh, secured and it has you know, cash buffer, it has profit buffer, and uh, the the developer could see that okay i will have less profit but i will have a successful exit so this is uh, really important for us and uh, that's why we never uh, um, offer a higher loan than uh, 70 percent of the asset of the asset that is pledged so we'll have this 30 percent uh, buffer that could be dis discounted when we need to return uh, the investor money and which is uh, really important and uh, could be affected to these uh, investment opportunities that high that offers higher LTV, like 80%, like 19%, like 100%. And uh, this also connects to the buying uh, the real estate, the apartment itself. So, for example, if you buy and you take the loan, so it's all, always, you know, smaller amount from your side, you are taking risk of uh, having a loan and uh, now what we face the situation in Lithuania, we, we have been lagging of uh, people coming from Ukraine, from Belarus, from uh, Kazakhstan, from low, low income countries. So they would fill positions in the logistics center, in the uh, supermarkets, in, uh, in those uh, low income jobs. And uh, this really pushed this uh, this balance in the market. What uh, Gustas previously told that, uh, you know, the city center and uh, what is around uh, around the city and the location that we should be, you know, structured uh, and uh, we, we should have this in prices of ourselves. So what, uh, what would happen, for example, if uh, the low income buyer would be pushed out of market because there is a, now a Ukrainian people who, who are really motivated and they can work hard jobs because they, you know, they are pushed in this situation of extreme situations. And they are really uh, going hard in order to survive. And uh, I, I want you know to take this chance and uh, to to stand with Ukraine and uh, to show to show the support of their people. And uh, I believe this uh, you know could be a signal for for Lithuanians who have been living uh, in a good situation for for a couple of years. And uh, now we will have this you know higher uh, higher competition. Uh, for these jobs. So I don't know if uh, a person uh, who is 
earning a minimum wage or somewhere above the minimum wage can uh, take a loan with uh, 70 80 percent uh, ltv and uh, have an apartment somewhere close to the city center so so this is uh, this cannot this can only they this can also affect uh, the rental market too okay thank you very much so it seems like there is a in lithuania a, a special situation in the in the rental market um where uh yeah people might take loans uh, which are usually not uh, not uh, supposed to because that's you I just want to add something also, yeah uh, not only lithuania but poland as well like uh, okay. what is being now noticed in warsaw is that it's impossible to rent an apartment and there's you know if we like what martina said like in lithuania we expect the ukrainians you know who will come and work here or you know they are like it people you know and they just want you know they continue to work warsaw is the place you know where all the businessmen all the rich people went from ukraine uh and basically what is being now noticed at warsaw is that ukrainians when they don't find the place to run they just bring in cash and pay for the apartment at all like at once you know so i think that uh lithuania poland like probably czech republic everything that you know surrounds ukraine will see unprecedented days you know when it comes to real estate transactions and the uh, rental market okay um so uh, if we are uh, we are listening to the uh, politicians or looking at the stock markets uh, you can you can see that uh, the globally uh um, intention uh, only sees a, a pretty small risk. Um, I mean, uh, the stock markets are near their all-time high. Uh, politicians are uh, not really talking about the risk of, of, of whatever happens in, in this war. Um, so, how do you rate uh, this this uh, situation from the from the real estate view? Um, you guys from Lithuania just mentioned there is a very undervalued market which maybe reminds us uh, from from uh, of, of uh, yeah events in in the in the past uh, where uh, people took loans uh, for for real estate and maybe were not able to to refund them or to repay them so how is your view on the uh, on the on on the current market of of uh, p2p uh, lending or real estate lending um, in correlation to what is maybe there at, at, at risk Martina, yeah, so just... I, I uh, maybe I mentioned myself. It's not uh, that the market it's hugely undervalued. I think now it's you know some somehow the balance of uh, what we have and supply and demand, and we have this uh, unprecedented uh, demand during the pandemic. But uh, you know it should be stabilized in the long term. But uh, when you think about the stock markets, so you know there is a lot of institutional capital there. There is a lot of investors there. And uh, what uh, we can see that there is an opinion of the whole world there. So this is really important. But at the same time, uh, stock market, you know, uh, heavily affected uh, by the general mood, uh, which, which is uh, now in the market. And uh, now, as you mentioned, it's close to the uh, all-time high. And we are happening, you know, uh, experience a war somewhere. Uh, close to us so this can you know signal that uh, either uh, people think that you know it, it will stay local either there's you know ways how how we can solve this issue but uh, during all the shocks and uh, during all the crisis historically physical assets are the ones shock resistant so i'm not speaking about the diamonds the gold that you can put, put in your pocket and uh, run away but uh, also uh, the real estate assets the land uh, that you have so this this uh, really important uh, measure so what we can see that uh, for example in russia first day after the attack in ukraine the prices of uh, cars uh, rose 15 percent meaning that people knew that the rubble will uh, uh, slurp so, so needed, you know, to buy something physical that they can uh, have and they have uh, value secured there. So this is, you know, important. And we have uh, real, life, uh, real life events that, uh, you know, shows and supports uh, this opinion. Lucas, do you want to add something? You just unmute Yes. 
I just also want to hear yeah, also just go for just, it. Just to clarify that uh, the price is now or fair price. When I was talking, I was talking about two years ago that it was undervalued. Now it's reached like segments that we see differences, big differences between center and outer city. But uh, in in general, what uh, what can be expected with the uh, with, with the prices and with the growth of prices that uh, it's always comes down to income income to spendings ratio so basically the same question banks ask same question applies to affordable housing so if uh, people can spend uh, let's say if people spend 30 percent of disposable income on housing it means they live comfortably it means it's a economic definition of affordable housing so what does it mean in reality let's say that what i was telling you that the cheap apartments go for 300 euros now because of the influx of the migrants it grew to 400 euros 400 euros is still a very low price considering that if there's a household that a man that, that the wife and the husband make thousand euros each which is an entry salary for uh, warehouse workers, uh, you know, supermarket workers. So it, it means if they spend 600 euros on rental prices, they still live comfortably. So what I'm trying to say by this is that there's still a lot of room for the prices to grow, which will not impact the people behavior, behavior significantly because it will still fit under the economic definition of affordable housing. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, relating uh, to the to the questions, uh, to the question, uh, do you see there a, a big risk of of the um, this um, uh, this money uh, or the um, the war taking taking place for a longer time, longer uh, longer than expected, and influencing the the, the prices, um, which might catch up the um, the gap between uh, you just mentioned the thirty or forty percent affordable. Uh, pricing maybe up to to, to 50 and then um, the whole market uh, swaps or uh, do you think uh, real estate industry is uh, quite quite comfortable at the moment and there is no big risk I think that no matter when you look back you know Tob Tobias you you can look back to 2015 uh, you can look to 2010 no matter which point you look back uh, real estate always appear to be cheap like when you look back when you look retrospectively real estate grows with inflation short term prices will fluctuate who knows maybe in three years you know we will have 30 percent lower prices than we have today and this is all possible you know we, we cannot reject this uh, uh, hypothesis but in 10 years period the prices will rebound this is what has been happening you know last hundred years through all Western economies. So why should this be any different? You know, I think that in general, like when COVID money was printed, uh, we, we, we began to lose sense, like how much is something worth? Like if you were doing, uh, for example, I can give you my own personal example. I'm, I'm building a house uh, last two years. So for me, so from last week, uh, uh, you know, rails like, uh, glass rails to support you know terrace grew 50 percent and just because the glass grew and we are entering this uh, moments of history where cash or money doesn't mean that much anymore you want you want to invest everything you don't want to cash or if you don't want to even to invest spend it you know buy yourself a new car because what we're seeing today that the prices of used cars are also growing so i guess we should I always like to say this uh, quote by Warren Buffett, you know, he says, price is what you pay, value is what you get. So we are entering this moment of history uh, where we should ignore the numbers. We should ignore, you know, when, when we are talking about cer certain aspects, the, the, the number which is printed on the money, but we look at the value. And this is very specific reason why, why this is so relevant when it comes to uh, what we are doing is because uh you can invest in gold but gold is based on the consensus that i and you agree that the price should be this and market demands it but in general gold 
has very limited use and application. And it's more of a consensus point of view. Uh, whereas real estate is a utility. It's a utility which generates value and the value is monetized, meaning the rent is, which is provides housing function. It's also, it costs and someone has to pay for it. So bearing these aspects in mind, I believe that obviously short term there will be uh, turbulence, but long term and uh, actually I could show you some, a lot of charts here. I have like multiple sources, but you know, real estate is one of the most stable asset classes uh, throughout the last hundred years. The only problem with real estate is that it fluctuates sometimes, but not all times. So I am patient. Our investment opportunities are long term. And uh, I believe that, you know, we will go through the cycle. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Igor, uh, maybe handing over the question uh, to you. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, you're a little bit more pessimistic about the uh, market and the development in the near month, uh, which uh, fits to what Gustav uh, said. There might be flux uh, fluctuation uh, over the over the month, but uh, long term, um, it, it 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 usually. Uh, yeah, elevates on on the same level or a higher level. Uh, do you think the same way? Do you see bigger risk for for real estate for the real estate industry in the near future and in, in the far future? I mean, I'm, I'm I'm pessimistic for for the for the near future. I mean, of, regarding all the prices and the selling process. But if we're speaking of real estate, uh, I'm I'm very optimistic. I mean, I think uh, if we're speaking about Riga. Riga still has the uh, lowest prices uh, for the real estate uh, if we compare Lithuania and, and, and Estonia, for example. And uh, we still have a very large demand uh, for, for the new flats. And not only uh, because there is new people are coming, but, but the main concern, of course, in Riga is that uh, most of the, of, the, of the fund of this of this. Uh, Multi, multi flat houses were built uh, during the Soviet Union. Those were just the temporary houses. That the idea was that, that we will build them, and then and then maybe maybe in uh, 20 years' time we will renovate them, or, or or something will happen. And we were seeing right now that those houses are 30, 40 years old, and they're not being renovated. And obviously, I mean, there's no point of renovating them. So that's why the demand for the new flats is very very high still in Vienna. And I think. Uh, uh, especially right now, where the construction uh, will be frozen for some time. For, for example, because obviously several projects will be frozen, and the, the demand will be even higher for that. So, so if you're speaking about real estate market in, I think in any European country, but speaking about Latvia, I think it's. I'm very optimistic because the prices will eventually go up, and then and the demand I think is also will go up. So, but. Uh, but again, as Gustav said, I mean, the real estate is not is not. I mean, it's not a three months uh, investment. Obviously, it's 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 in a way it's a long term investment. For example, if we're seeing that some project in the bulk state were postponed or were delayed for for a year, for example. I mean, if it's from from the investor point of view, if we're speaking that the project was was idea was to exit the project in a year and now it's been postponed. I mean, from the real estate point of view, the two years for real estate is, is not uh, so big a term. So, so that's why I mean, uh, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about real estate, especially in here. But but if we're speaking the short term, I and mean, if we're speaking three months time, then then I think I think it will it will still stay the same. I think the investors will be cautious, the buyers will be cautious, and the, and the construction uh, will freeze for some time. So that's that's my that's my perspective for, for the summer. Okay, thank you very much. So um, let's uh, let's let's come to the last question. But before asking it, uh, I would like to uh, remind uh, the audience again uh, for asking questions. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, type in your question on the on the right side into the um, block into the uh, chat and ask. Uh, the speakers about anything uh, you want uh, to to know on the on the topic uh, so just go for it i'll be happy to to share them afterwards uh, when we are coming to the end so um the last question uh Artus, maybe you can uh, you can start with it i would like to know um 
we we faced a COVID. Uh, we faced uh, now the the uh, Ukrainian conflict. What are the learnings uh, for you, your platform, and your investors, which which uh, which are some some kind of uh, uh, opportunity for for the for the future? The biggest learning is that, like I mentioned before, people will learn to adapt to things. Uh, even when we find the situation hard, physically, mentally, or whatever, uh, the people who want to do things, to achieve things, uh, they find a way. And I think uh, it's the biggest takeaway from those things that if there are people who will be willing to do, uh, then we as a humanity will strive and move forward. Uh, also, I see on the right side, uh, Lasse asked a question, will the high number of Ukrainian immigrants do likely benefit the farmers since they will be able to recruit, recruit new staff? Well, no. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, at the moment, we have we don't have any data from uh, the farmers, any feedback. Uh, but of course, it depends on the Ukrainian people also. If they are willing to work in farms out of the city, uh, but I think there there will be more positive because uh, always someone will be up to do the job. Maybe that someone's whole life in Ukraine. He's a farmer. He's a farm worker. He comes here. He can he can do the same. Uh, so I think I think some some people will be able to recruit new staff. Yes, uh, that that would be my quick take on it because uh, at the moment I I don't have any statistics on anything regarding this, so I I can't comment it more precisely. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, Martinez, uh, maybe you can have uh, the the same question to you. What is uh, the the learning uh, for you as a platform, maybe for you personally, and for your investors out of the situation regarding the future? Yeah, for for let's invest. It's um, about the long term, and uh, what we have learned that uh, we need to stick. Uh, we need to stick to our strategy, to our long term strategy. And uh, do not uh, shift our actions, our beliefs, uh, what is happening uh, uh, due to uh, shocks, due to certain events. We need, be, we need to be cautious and uh, we need to be secure. But uh, this long-term strategy that we are taking, it's about the conservative of the projects and it's about uh, wealth management. So the, the goal is not, you know, to defeat inflation, it's not uh, the goal to earn double digit uh, every year. Uh, the goal is to have conservative projects between seven to 10 per annual return per year. And uh, we have uh, experienced all the project owners paying all the interest payments on time without any delays uh, throughout the history of uh, Let's Invest. Uh, even in the last month, um, we have one project uh, fully returned and one project partially returned. So this shows uh, that uh, the financial situation, which is currently of our selected project, it's, uh, it's good, it's stable. So, so we are seeing that uh, the strategy that we had previously of selecting this conservative uh, approach uh, pays off. And uh, we see that uh, the activity of investors is remaining uh, as it was uh, prior to, to the recent events. So this is uh, what we have learned and what we want to tell uh, our investors that, uh, you know, the, the shifts happen, but uh, if uh, the long-term strategy is in place, uh, we will be good. Okay, thank you very much. Igor, uh, what is your view on the on the current situation? What are the learnings for for bulk estate, and what is maybe the opportunity for the for the future, which you uh, found out? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, 
there was some problems with the projects, for example, where we understand now they were, for example, overvalued. Uh, we saw that the companies that gave the valuation and the valuation was, was uh, uh, much higher, for example, when, when the project defaulted and then we had to go to, uh, to, to the auction, for example, we understood that this valuation that's been done before the COVID, I mean, the COVID, because of the COVID, the prices dropped, especially when there were defaults uh, during the COVID, when there was the auctions, uh, when there were, uh, for example, non-resident money involved, there was, uh, there was one, one property for us, uh, where obviously the buyer uh, for this property would be the Russian or Ukrainian uh, residents, obviously, because it was, it was from the luxury point of view. And during the COVID, everyone was forbidden to, to, I mean, to cross the border. And obviously, if we understood, if we went for the, for the auction, we would lose, uh, at that time, we, we thought that we would lose till, till 18% from the, from the principal. So we, for example, we postponed the auction and then we managed to refinance it uh, through the other fund. So obviously what we're looking right now more closely is, is, is the valuation, especially during those, uh, those unstable times. Now the, now the, the conflict uh, before the, the COVID and uh, that's the one thing that we're looking into it. Of course, we're consulting with real estate companies as well right now. So if we're, if we're uh, planning to give the money, if we're planning to develop something, we're consulting with the, with the two largest companies uh, which are in here. For example, if they will be ready to undertake the, the selling process, if they're interested, if they're ready to sign the exclusive agreement for the selling, then I understand that they believe into the project as well and it will be much easier to to sell it. So there are several steps uh, that that being taken. Uh, and of course, the communication with the investor, I mean, that that was always uh, that was always uh, bulk estate. Uh, uh, this is a, a, how to say it. I mean, uh, uh, we were very, we were, we were quite bad in that. And when, for example, when everything was fine, uh, the bulk estate was one of the quietest platforms. I mean, everything was fine anyway, and everyone was investing. But right now, I mean, as, as we see it, people need the info. Uh, and then what we're trying to do right now, we're trying to communicate more and more and more with our investors, especially about the delayed projects, about the problematic projects. And uh, yeah, so those are the steps we're trying, we're trying to take. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so there is a there is a question, uh, especially for you. Maybe you can add it. Um, it says uh, from Lasse, thank you very much. Um, does the current conflict bring any new opportunities to the real estate market in Riga? Do you have a thought on it? I would say that uh, because uh, lots of new projects, not lots of new development projects from the scratch will be postponed, as I said before, then of course there is there is uh, opportunity for the projects uh for example to buy uh, an existing old house and renovate it obviously for this kind of development that's that's an opportunity of course the for those kind of projects the demand will be very high because there won't be any preposition at all i mean obviously there will be either renovated houses or or the old uh, developments so in, in that scenario of course there's there is a new uh, there is a new opportunity for, for us as well. And of course, as, as, as the guys mentioned before, as the guys saw in Lithuania, we see a boom in, in the private housing market, of course, because the people, because of the COVID, people are moving outside the big cities. And uh, right now we see, uh, we see, and we're also checking, checking uh, the, the, the small developers who are buying and uh, who are building the small houses because it's still, I mean, the prices, the selling prices for those guys, uh, uh, for those development projects skyrocketed. And, uh, the selling prices, not the construction. So, so yeah, the renovation, I would say, that's, that's. Uh... Okay, thank you very much. Martinez, uh, same question uh, to you. Uh, ending the panel uh, today, um, what what is your learning uh, for for you and uh, for for the platform? What is the opportunity for the for the future you can take uh, take out of this co uh, conflict situation? 
Uh, so I already answered the question. Maybe you are delegating to to Gustas. Oh, sorry, I noted it wrong. Sorry. Then Gustas, uh, same question to you. Uh, you know, I would say that you know we, in a sense, we anticipated this, like not a war, but we anticipated some sort of uh, high level uh, impact event. Uh, at first, I thought this is COVID. I was wrong. Uh, maybe I'm wrong again now, but uh, as I told earlier, you know, in this uh, discussion is that, you know, real estate development has a tendency to work and uh, work very well until it doesn't. And when it doesn't, it stops everywhere. You know, it's not a singular solution. Yeah, there, there are some projects which are planned poorly. There are some projects with, you know, mishandled, but the general industry stops at one time, you know. Uh, whereas, you know, rental real estate is lower risk and people always need to rent. So in a sense, we uh, dissipated this model. Now it's stress testing, seeing whether all our assumptions work. I think that uh, where uh, what what we are, we, we basically we are going to again narrow our focus here. So right now we are focusing mainly on affordable housing and uh, trying to understand whether other verticals still make sense. Obviously, there are some deals that are always too good not to take. Like, for example, with 25% LTV, I would take a warehouse today, even if that warehouse, you know, works with the wood imports from Russia. You know, you, with, with such low prices, you have big margin of safety and you can, you know, create and you can add other tenants, you can add them cheaper, but in general, it's pretty, pretty safe. So I would say that uh, we are very open at the market to see what's going to happen. And we are again, continuing to do what we have been doing until now. I think that now is the moment when people will begin to consider, you know, why buy to let is a nice option for diversification, even though the returns is a bit smaller, you know, so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just uh, wasn't able to hit the mute button. Um, so I would like uh, to add another question for uh, for investors, as uh, many of the audience uh, is, uh, are investors, bloggers, and um, uh, uh, people related to the uh, to the industry. Um, zooming a little bit out, uh, you uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I think I got it right. Uh, all of you are in the long term optimistic about the situation. Um, when, when starting as an in investor, um, I now listen to you, I get the intention, it might not be uh, the best idea or uh, there might be some struggles over the next month, maybe years, but a long term uh, real estate uh, is, is something I have to invest in. Um, what, is, uh, what, is, what is your idea um, personally, um, how to invest or how to start in, in investing with uh, real estate? Maybe you can try to zoom out a little bit uh, from your, your uh, uh, function at the uh, platform and uh, give the audience a short idea about uh, what, uh, where to, to invest in and what to maybe um, have a short idea about it. Atos, maybe you can give us a short idea about what you would do as a private um, person. Yeah, sure. Uh, if I were private investor at this point uh, I would maybe look at the shorter term loans uh, for example you said to zoom out of our platform but unfortunately that's what I'm most familiar with uh, we offer season, seasonal funding for farmers which uh, average long term is from six to nine months and that's the period of time that, um, as an investor at this point, I would uh, be able to tell the stability of the market, I think, without risking uh, losing my money in the long term. Uh, either now, I don't, I don't see agricultural sector going downhill any anywhere in the future because the population is growing and demand is rising so um uh, yeah my, my personal would be start with the shorter term ones that are a 
available on there. Okay, thank you very much. Igor, uh, maybe you can give us a short insight about your personal um, advice for, for new investors, how to how to act, react on the situation. I mean, my personal opinion would be obviously any, any project that you are coming in into real estate right now, it will be, I mean, it will end at least uh, next year fastest. I mean, it's, it's during, during the, the springs, obviously, uh, if, I mean, I don't believe that this conflict will move uh, away from Ukraine. I'm, I'm hoping that it will stay there and it will finish there. But obviously, if that's so, I mean, I, I don't see why not to invest in real estate uh, starting now. Because anyway, as I said, if you are, if you are investing in a in normal project right now, and if it's, uh, if it's not, a building from the scratch, uh, then 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 why not? Because anyway, the exit from that project will be, um, I mean, the fastest next year. I mean, if it's if it's 12 months, but this, if it's for example, it's if it's if, 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 even much longer, then I don't see how this conflict can can affect uh, the exact property, for example. So I mean, as as I said, and then in the long term, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm very positive. Uh, positively looking to the market. So as I said, I think I think that this uncertainty and caution uh, I hope will end in several months' time and I think it will be back on track uh, once again. So I don't see why not. Thank you very much for your opinion. Uh, Gustav, maybe you can share your idea about it uh, with, with, the, with us and the audience. Can you please repeat the question? The question was uh, when when I listened to you uh, zooming zooming a little bit out um, as a new investor, uh, uh, getting to know real estate is important to invest in, which uh, which might um, overcome the inflation rate or uh, all the struggles uh, we face currently. What would you uh, what would be your suggestion to to start uh, with um, as a new investor okay. on the on the whole? I would say, I would say that there are a few things you can do. So first one invest not necessarily real estate but just invest because money will lose its value so do anything you can in order you know to reduce you know the level that you're losing obviously uh, best is to diversify and i'm talking not only real estate but consider you know investing in commodities or gold you know something which usually stand inflation especially commodities right now uh, when it comes to real estate, I stand again by my opinion that if you invest in real estate, make sure it's not a fixed income because, or you can also invest partially in fixed income, but just remember that you don't have any hedge. You, by investing in fixed income, you just instantly make sure that uh, you're going to lose X amount of money. So keep this in mind, but lose less is better than lose more. And everyone most likely will be losing money during this short-term period. So now it's best to lose as little as possible to prevent, you know, your personal damage. That's a very good answer. Thank you very much. Martinez, uh, same question to you. Um, is there anything um, <coughs> which, you, which you personally would uh, suggest and advise to new investors? Yeah, so I think I can uh, wrap it up uh, in the whole discussion. So basically, when we think about uh, humans, you know, we, we are usually living in uh, five to seven years uh, cycles. So, so first of all, you know, this uh, adolescence, and we are moving to this uh, first uh, adulthood uh, when we don't not have that much, you know, requirements for the apartments. We just need somewhere close, you know, to, to the friends somewhere close to the city center, some, somewhere close to the university. Uh, then uh, we start having kids. We want something larger space. Uh, then, uh, you know, everything is good from the financial perspective. We shall, maybe shall we go to the countryside, have a house. Uh, maybe shall we, we shall buy, you know, a uh, holiday house somewhere outside. Uh, but the key is that doesn't matter in which stage you are. You, you can always, you know, have this part of your income delegated for the future. 
and uh, as early you can start investing doesn't matter the sum uh, you can have more in the future and uh, this is really important to diversify and uh, think as a real estate okay i can buy an apartment and the government can issue me a loan at really good uh, conditions so this is okay this is must to take but uh, shall i take the maximal tv maybe it's not that uh, you know for for my style of living maybe i need to be more conservative so this you should take into account but the income that is left after you pay the taxes after you uh, pay for your everything everyday needs for for holidays i don't know but uh, this uh, cash buffer that you are collecting you can always invest and uh, doesn't matter the age doesn't matter the gender i think it's very you know you, uh, there is a unity there and uh, we are all similar in this sense okay thank you very much martinez so there is uh, a question from the, from the audience which i like uh, to to read out um it's from yevgeny uh, what are expected returns, interest rates for development, uh, rent, agricultural projects, and what, in your opinion, is adequate returns given to current inflation and uncertainty? Um, is there anyone who wants to go first uh, answering uh, the question as it, uh, yeah. I can go first. Yeah, so, for sure. Thank so you. So on our platform, average rental yield, which you can find is 6 7%. So inflation will impact it. And then you get on top capital gains. So some capital gains are fixed. So 2%. So you get on average 8 9% or it's profit share. So our recent examples show that, you know, some profit share can go up to double digits. But I would say best way to estimate is measure by looking at what is the inflation rate and uh, do your own math. But I would say that at the end, we will end up with something like 10, 10%, something maybe a little bit above. Some projects will do better. Some some projects will be do worse. But either way, they will be a predictable income and generate you monthly income and paid out monthly. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else who wants to add something to this question from his point of view? I think it's already uh, answered with the answer from Gustas. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, you guys, uh, you speakers, uh, for being here and sharing uh, this panel with me. It was a great pleasure to uh, to guide you through the questions and uh, hopefully give our audience a very good view on the on the current uh, influences of the uh, for the for the real estate industry um, with the uh, with the war and the conflict and also the pandemic uh, pandemic which is still going on. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, we will see again uh, in half an hour at this panel uh, with another uh, panel uh, talking about uh, the securities uh, for, for platforms and investors. Uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.